Look if Felhar has gotten a buff and his campaign suddenly became awesome. This is Mercy the Mad. Today I've got a two turn guide to take Star Tower with Lockheer. We'll cover the changes in the Rakarth update that affect Lockheer, a couple of bugs, one good, one bad, and some exploits that you can do with Lockheer's campaign. Just ignore the marks of the old ones and force march Lockheer immediately out into the ocean towards the Star Tower. Move the Blessed Dread a little closer to the Star Tower and recruit two Black Corsair Hambos. His Black Ark, the Blessed Dread, now has 10% missile resistance, plus six melee attack for Black Ark Corsairs, and plus 10 Black Ark growth is the big one. It grows really fast now. It also has a unique building chain called the Helm of the Blessed Dread. Gives you extra campaign movement, extra casualties captured post battle, and heaps of extra income from sacking settlements within its sphere of influence. But you can actually demolish the Helm of the Blessed Dread building for some extra cash, as we won't be using the Blessed Dread in this playthrough. Although Black Arcs normally don't cause supply lines penalty, there's currently a bug where the Blessed Dread is actually causing you supply lines penalty, uh, even though it doesn't display at the top of the screen. Recruit a second Lord, a Chupa Yodel, and then the supply lines penalty will display that you have two armies, but you actually have three armies affecting the supply lines, including the Blessed Dread. Recruit three units with your other Lord. If you want a non-aggression pact with the Henowen, take it on turn one. In my head canon, Lockheed's got a lucrative sideline selling rat slaves to Tehenowen for his sacrifices. On turn two, you get the quest, the dragon and the kraken. And in my opinion, this is the single best improvement to Lockheed's campaign. I hate Lustria, and I love being able to confederate all of the faction's legendary lords. The quest gives you easy confederation with Karen Kar in the north, which gives the option to either migrate to the north away from Lustria, or get early diplomatic contact with Rakarth, Hellebron, Malekith, and Marathi, allowing you to confederate them and bring them down south if you wish. On turn two, move the Blessed Dread up to blockade the Star Tower. Force March Lockheer to catch up and transfer all of his troops into the Blessed Dread. Then move Lockheer ashore on the left hand side. Move the other Lord up and transfer the three troops they recruited into the Blessed Dread. That Lord won't have enough movement to take part in the battle themselves though. The bad bug is that the Blessed Dread gives a supply lines penalty when Black Arcs aren't supposed to give supply lines penalties. The good bug is that when you do an offensive siege with the Blessed Dread, if the Blessed Dread's Admiral dies in the battle, then the Blessed Dread goes into a wounded state, but the next turn, you also get a new Black Arc available to be recruited. The first thing that you want to do in the battle is make sure that Admiral Kanoovail dies. Now, you probably want to waste the ammunition of the defenders, so I like to spread out my troops hidden in the forest along the walls and leave only Kano Oveil visible. Then I use him to waste the ammunition of the defenders. If he takes some damage, it doesn't matter because I'm going to suicide him anyway. Because the Fleet Admiral is the only unit visible, the enemy won't have their defenders spread out properly along the walls, so you can launch your assault and it should be fairly easy to take the walls, especially once their ammunition is depleted. Eventually, Lockheed's Black Arc Corsairs will cause fear, a plus 8 melee attack, and do plus 100% piercing missile damage, so instead of doing 3 piercing, they'll do 6. They'll have Vanguard deployment and Stalk, so they'll be invisible. And all this is from Lockyer's unique skill line. From the standard skills available to all Lords, they'll also be able to get the standard Sheaf Master with plus 20% ammunition, plus 10 reload time. And they'll be able to go down the melee line to get plus eight melee attack and melee defense. On top of all that, they also get numerous buffs from the tech tree. All of these buffs, particularly the double AP range damage for Lockyer's hand bows, makes them a really fun and effective unit in the early game right up until the end game when you might start to replace them with shades and hydras after the battle admiral kanuovail will be wounded transfer his troops into Lockheed's army then disband the two extra lords make sure you disband them while they're in the water as they can't rebel even if they have low loyalty if they're in water upgrade your barracks to level two this will allow you to recruit two master heroes and they can buff growth in your provinces after the Rakarth update, the amount of growth required to get your settlements to tier 2 and above in Very Hard and Legendary has gone up. Apparently there was a bug that was making it lower than it was supposed to be. Now you need 200 growth to get to tier 2, so two Master Heroes able to buff growth will be very useful. Next turn, because of the good bug, you should have an extra Black Arc Admiral available to recruit. 
Note that after conquering the Star Tower, Lockyer owns one major port. Therefore, his cap should still be one for Black Ark Admirals. So this is not him increasing his cap by taking a capital. This is him duping Black Arks through this good bug, which basically seems to be caused by the Blessed Dread Admiral dying when attacking in a siege. I'm not sure what the exact conditions for this bug are. It seems like you won't get the extra black arc in some situations, like if the Admiral dies in a defensive siege where you're being attacked. But so far, I've managed to get an extra black arc every time I've gotten the Blessed Dread Admiral killed when he's initiated the attack in a siege. So here, where I'm following up on turn four to take out Fuming Serpent and wipe out Teclas with my newly duped Black Ark Admiral, I won't get him killed in the battle. It won't do anything. It won't dupe your Black Arcs if you do it with a normal Admiral. It's got to be the Blessed Dreads Admiral. So you wait five turns till he's available to be recruited again and then get him killed in another offensive siege and you'll get another free Black Ark on the following turn. As the Blessed Dread Admiral will be wounded for five turns, and then after that it'll take a couple of turns for him to get into a position where he can die in an offensive siege. You can only do this sort of Black Ark duping bug every maybe seven or eight turns. In this campaign, I was able to dupe four Black Ark Admirals by around turn 26, and then I respawned the Blessed Dread, but he's been wandering around for four turns now without being able to find a target to suicide himself on yet. Just using Lockheed's normal mechanic, you may actually be able to increase your number of Black Arks as fast or faster just by conquering major port settlements around the map. However, this duping method allows you to kind of build tall without having to conquer a lot of territory to give you a sort of an alternate play style. You can see here, I've only got two major ports but I've got five black arcs. Once the Blessed Dread supply line bug is fixed it might be a bit of a harder decision because the huge buffs to sacking income that you get from the Blessed Dread and even more importantly the huge growth bonus that it gets makes the Blessed Dread an extremely powerful black arc so you may not want to have the Blessed Dread be out for like five out of every eight turns for you to do this duping bug but at the moment the supply line's is really kind of crippling. So this is just a kind of fun workaround to negate that penalty. Another way you could start the game is to just wait on the first turn and recruit. And then on the second turn, once the Dragon and the Kraken quest pops, then attack Mark of the Old Ones so that you can get a 500 head start on the captives that you need for that quest. You could then you know, farm rebellions, sack coastal cities, as many captives as fast as possible to unlock that confederation with Karen Carr, which will allow you to migrate to the north early on. If you like the Dark Elf loyalty cheese exploit, I have a little update to that that actually makes it a lot easier to do and reduces the repetitiveness a little bit. First, hire the new lord with the lowest loyalty. Then move either that lord or your army into the settlement. Then transfer two units back and forth between Lockyer and the new Lord. Because you're right next to the settlement, it won't use any movements. You can do this infinitely. Before long, the Lord will be reduced to two loyalty. And this is where we do things a little bit differently. Thanks a lot to Thingamy Bob for telling me about this little trick. And thanks to Axiom Razor, who I think was the first one to discover the loyalty cheese. When the Lord is at two loyalty, transfer one single unit into the Lord's army and then you disband that one unit. So what makes this version so much better is, firstly, you only need to reduce their loyalty to two instead of one, which saves you a lot of monotonous moving units back and forth. And secondly, you don't need any money to hire the Lord. I'll just temporarily hide my money in recruitment, and you can see I've only got 191 gold remaining, which is not normally enough to hire a Lord. When the Lord is at loyalty two, and I disband that last unit, they'll automatically rebel and form a secessionist army. Choose the lowest loyalty Lord to replace them, and I'll get that Lord for 191 gold. Note, they can actually spawn with some troops, so you can get more battle captives towards your current car confederation quest. Keep swapping troops back and forth with the new Lord until their loyalty drops to two. Transfer one unit to the Lord and disband it, and you'll get a replacement Lord absolutely free this time since you've got no gold. 
However, they spawn with health relative to the amount of gold you spend on them. So they'll only have one hit point. It makes it easier for them to be farmed. Occasionally when you're transferring the units, the Lord can lose two loyalty points in one go instead of one, dropping their loyalty down to one. Disbanding the single unit only makes them rebel if they're at loyalty two, not loyalty one. If this happens, you'll have to cancel your recruitment to free up your money and just buy a replacement Lord normally if you want to keep spawning rebels. Another huge time saving tip for this exploit is that you can actually move two units out and move two units in to the Lord's army at the same time effectively making it twice as fast and it still makes them lose loyalty at the same rate. One cool thing about Black Arcs is once they're docked with a port city, they actually have a huge reinforcement range, much larger than a normal army's reinforcement range. So once you have spawned enough rebels, move the Blessed Dread into the settlement. You can attack the rebels with Lockheed and the Blessed Dread will actually be able to reinforce. If you have the patience, you can just sit in Chipiato and spawn heaps and heaps of rebels basically for free and level up lock here the blessed dread and your two master heroes as well as making heaps of money and getting a lot of items this isn't the best place to do the loyalty cheese just because the terrain's a little bit awkward but if you want to power level lock here to level 14 to unlock all of the black art corsair buffs in his tree right from the start this could be a fun campaign that's about all i've got for the lock here campaign so far if you found any cool new stuff with lock here's campaign after the recap update uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, click a like on the video if you liked it and i uh, just want to say thanks to all the guys in chat that um, helped with ideas and uh, and stuff for this video cheers